So to follow on from my forest tutorial, um, I'm just going to go through the setup of the camera, uh, 3D camera setup in Fusion. So this is the sort of basic setup here. What we're going to do is export a camera from Maya, can be from any 3D app, but we're just going to do it in Maya. Um, and then we're going to import it into Fusion and plug it into a little setup like this. So first I'll walk through the importing of the camera and then I'll walk through what nodes to put where and so on. So firstly, let's go over to a 3D scene. So this scene, this scene has a, a, a just a very simple camera move. Camera just goes up. So let's select the camera, and we're going to want to export this animated camera as an Alembic. And to do that, all we need to do is go to Cache Alembic Cache, and export selection to Alembic. Click the little box. Let's get the menu up, and we want to export the time slider export selection and I've already got one here but I'll just do another one and you'll see it just caches out the camera and then we want to jump into fusion let's just put this old setup aside the first thing you want to do is go to file go to import alembic scene and then you want to go to your where your cache is so Alembic can be default, okay. And then we've got the camera imported here. You see, it comes in like this one I've already imported, the cam A shape, comes in with the transform 3D and so on. So that's the basic part of importing it and that'll just go for any 3D app really. So once we've got it in to Fusion, we want to replicate this sort of setup. So there's a couple of things worth mentioning just quickly at this point. Um, one, if you if you've got camera shake on your shake enabled, this this Maya camera shake, it doesn't import properly into Fusion. So I would probably do it in Fusion actually. If you've got some micro jitter you want to add, do it in Fusion. Or there is a, a, a longer workaround way to get this into Fusion working, but I'm not going to cover that now because it's a bit long winded. And the other thing to note back in Fusion is that this setup I've got here. It's a HDRI, I've got this from HDRI Haven. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. And I'm projecting it onto a sphere. Then in the 3D scene, you can move the sphere about and so on. I find it easier just to do it with a sphere because basically when your camera's sort of moving around, you might, if you're using a plane, it might clip it and then you have to scale it up or scale it across or whatever. It's easier with a sphere because then the camera can move quite freely and it'll just, it won't clip the edges, but you can do either. So the first thing we want to do to rebuild this little setup here is we just want to grab a HDRI and just bring it in. So I'm going to do that. Just brought one out of my library. Like I said, that's from HDRI Haven. One of the things that's nice about that website is they have some really nice high res ones. Uh, just using a 4K one, but often when you're you know distorting it on the sphere, um, it will be quite low res. Depending on your scene, that may not matter. So to bring that into the right color space, because if we have a look at that, it's, oh, I'm not really sure. I think that's just linear. Um, so if we just drop down a gamut and switch it to sRGB. So with the gamut um, loaded, you can still see that it's you know pretty clipped and not looking great. So we want to drop down a color corrector and just correct it to taste probably just to the shot and actually um, so just you know bring the gain down a bit maybe saturation I don't know whatever you want to do and then once you've color corrected it you're going to want to turn this into a material so that's why we've got this blend node here so if we throw down a blend and pipe that in that's going to create this material by the way if I'm moving that light using the middle mouse button and if, if you want to rotate a scene in 3D in Fusion, hold down Alt and hold down the middle mouse button and the middle mouse scroll to zoom. Uh, so that's the the blend material and we're going to put that onto a 3D sphere. So as you can see here, we've got the shape 3D. So let's put down a shape 3D node. Pipe the material in. Green, we need to use the green uh, arrow, not the orange one and we can't see anything just yet. What we need to do is change this from plane to sphere. And we're probably gonna want this to be pretty big. I think the scene scale will be 
um, wildly different to what we're seeing. Yeah, maybe a thousand to start off with. Because I think the one I've put here, yeah, 8,000. It's they have to be quite big to encompass the scene, depending on your scene scale. So let's scale it up. Okay, so we're inside this thing now. Once again, using Alt and Middle Mouse to rotate and uh, middle mouse zoom and just single click middle mouse you can just navigate around like this so now we've got that we want to merge our 3d camera with this little scene we've put together here so we want to create a merge 3d node and then pipe in the sphere and our camera and then if we look at this we can see now we've got the camera which is great. So if you want to rotate this to get the sun to be sort of in the center of the scene, just go to this tab here, the control tab, and you can do it in the viewport as well, but I like doing it here. So if we go to the Y rotate and just rotate it round, you can see it's gonna be more in your camera's sort of corner, corner of the camera um, visibility there and to be able to see what's going on and actually to render this out as a, you know a, t a 2d plane to comp into your comp you want to drop down a render 3d so let's do that now and pipe this orange input into the render 3d and let's have a look and so we've got a 1080p render here with a nice little bit of sun in the corner and if we scroll the the timeline you can see it's copying that same movement that we had in the Maya scene so now you'll get a background that fits and sticks in in the comp so that's that part of you know um, creating it there's a couple of little details probably worth mentioning at this point is that uh, you can see here it's just um, produced a, an 8-bit image which we don't want we want the renderer to produce it, probably a 16 bit, I would say. So if we go over to the frame format, if we change the depth to float 16, that's gonna be better for using in our comp. And you've got other options in here, like the resolution and so on. And so now all that's left to do is, you can see up here I've added a little glow to the one I've added to my scene. So if we just have a quick look at the comp, um, take a minute so you can see it's loaded in there now let's just pipe in our new one just to see what it looks like so yeah I mean it's it's not lined up quite how I want it so you know you can in real time now just rotate this round to where you might want it maybe rotate it up a little bit like this get that in the corner sort of like that Hopefully that gives you some insight into how to build a simple 3D setup in Fusion. And you can go ahead and do other things with this as well. So for example, this here is a bit of uh, fog stock footage and I'm projecting it onto an image plane um, and using the camera here to just put that in the foreground and so on. And then that can be piped into the comp once it's rendered via the render 3d node so you can use this setup for other things too so it's quite useful to know and it's quite simple to set up so hope that was useful and uh, thanks for watching this tutorial give us a like and subscribe if this was useful and uh, I'll be publishing some more fu fusion tutorials in the near future so stay tuned for that